In this video, we will begin by defining algebraic expressions and guide you on an easy path to mastering algebra quickly. As we progress, we'll explore smart techniques, tips, and tricks. Let's dive right in. In algebra, we represent real-life situations using numbers, letters, and operations. This is known as algebraic expressions. Imagine you are ordering pizzas for a party. For every guest attending your party, you want to order two slices of pizza. Additionally, you want to order five extra slices to make sure there is enough for everyone. To find out the total number of pizza slices you need to order, you will use the expression 2g plus 5, where g is the number of guests. In algebra, the g is what is known as the variable. It can change. We don't know the number of guests. Imagine you are planning the party. If you invite 10 guests, the total number of pizza slices you need is 2 times the 10 guests, plus 5 extra slices. This is 25. So you will need 25 slices of pizza for 10 guests. If you invite 3 guests, the total number of pizza slices you need is 2 times the 3 guests, plus 5. This is 11. So you'll need 11 slices of pizza for 3 guests. As you can see, the expression 2g plus 5 helps you quickly calculate the total number of pizza slices needed for any number of guests. The 5 is the constant. You are buying 5 extra slices, no matter what the situation. This value doesn't change. Even if there are 100 guests, you're still buying only 5 extra pizzas. The 2 is known as the coefficient. This is simply the number in front of the variable. It usually represents the value per unit. In this case, it is the number of pizza slices you want to buy for one guest. As you proceed through your algebra course, you will meet scenarios where letters, instead of numbers, are used as constants and coefficient. We will look at them later. In real life, we use algebra all the time, mostly not deliberately. There are times that deliberate use of algebra would have made everyone's life a lot easier. Let's look at another scenario. Imagine you are organizing a party and need to prepare snacks for both guests and servers. Here's the detailed breakdown of the situation. Each guest will receive two snacks. Each server will receive three snacks. Additionally, you plan to have 10 extra snacks in total to ensure there's enough for everyone. Later, you decide to include a contingency plan for guests and servers. For every guest, you need four more snacks, and for every server, you need two more snacks. You already have five snacks available from a previous event that you can use. You can absolutely answer this without directly implementing algebra. Try it out. Assuming there are 50 guests and four servers, each guest will receive two snacks. There are 50 guests. So we'll have two times 50. This will give us 100 snacks. Each server will receive three snacks. There are four servers. So we will have three times four. This will be 12 snacks. Additionally, you plan to have 10 extra snacks in total to ensure there's enough for everyone. This statement means you have 10 snacks. For the contingency plan, every guest gets four more snacks. There are 50 guests, so you will have four times 50. This is 200 snacks. Then for every server, you need two more snacks. There are four servers, so you will have two times four. This is eight. Finally, you already have five snacks available from a previous event that you can use, so you will subtract five from the total needed. Now we put everything together. 100 plus 12 plus 10 plus 200 plus eight minus five. This is 325. Without directly involving algebra, this is the way you will solve this. Making it worse, any time the number of servers or guests changes, you'll have to go through this process again. Also, because of the length, you can make a mistake in the calculation. If you decide to use algebra, then all you'll need is the expression 6g plus 5s plus 5, where g represents guests and s represents servers. This one expression replaces all six statements. So if you have 50 guests and four servers, then your solution will be six times the 50 guests, plus five times the four servers, plus five. 
We compute this to get 325 snacks. We notice that using algebraic expression makes it easier to get the number of snacks needed and also easier communicate. All this information has been reduced to just one expression. If the number of guests or servers changes, it is easier to calculate the new value by just replacing the S or G value. Let's look at how we got this expression. Each guest will receive two snacks, that is the same as 2G. Notice that we are just replacing the 50 with G. Each server will receive three snacks, that is 3S. Notice that we are just replacing the 4 with S. There is an additional 10 snacks, which is not dependent on the servers or guest. It's a constant, so we have plus 10. For the contingency plan, for every guest, you need four snacks. That is the same as 4G. Again, notice that we are just replacing the 50 with G. For every server, you need two more snacks. That is 2S. Notice that we are just replacing the 4 with S. You already have five snack. So you will subtract the five snacks you already have from the total you need to make. Now you have this expression. In algebra, you can add or subtract like terms. Like terms have the exact same variables raised to the exact same powers. We will dive deeper soon. For this expression, we can add the g terms. We have 2g plus 4g. All we do is add the numbers and bring the common letter after it. 2 plus 4 is 6, so we have 6g. We do the same for the s terms. We add 3s plus 2s to get 5s. We can add the constant terms. 10 minus 5 will give us 5. Now that we know that algebraic expressions are usually derived from real-life situations, let's practice adding and subtracting in algebra. To understand addition and subtraction in algebra, you need to fully understand what a term is. A term is a number, variable, or a combination of values multiplied or divided together that is separated by a plus sign. Let's look at this expression. Question 1. 2 plus a minus 3b. The terms here are 2, a, and negative 3b. Notice that the 2 and the a are separated by a plus sign. For the negative 3b, we are saying it is a term, though it is separated by a minus sign. We say this because the subtraction of a number is the same as the addition of a negative number. So minus 3b is the same as plus negative 3b. If we write it this way, then we can see that the negative 3b is a term. We said earlier that you can add like terms. Like terms have the same variables and those variables have the same exponents. Question 2. Identify the like terms. 4, 3a, 2b, negative 3ab, 5a squared b, 2ab, 8 and 4a squared b. Negative 3ab and 2ab are like terms. Also, 5a squared b and 4a squared b are like terms. Please note that the letters in their exponents must be exactly the same. 4 and 8 are like terms. Constant terms are like terms. Both 4 and 8 have no letters after the numbers. The 3a and 2b have nothing that is similar to it. Although we have an a and a b, we don't have any exact match to it. Let's move on. Question 3. Simplify the expression. 2x squared plus 3x plus 5x squared minus 5. To simplify this expression, we want to combine like terms. We can combine the 2x squared and the 5x squared. To combine terms, we add the numbers. 2 plus 5 is 7. Then we just bring the variable after it. So we have x squared. The rest are dissimilar, so we cannot combine them. We just write them. So far, we have been adding and subtracting terms. You can also be asked to add or subtract expressions. Question 4. Simplify the expression 4x squared minus 3xy minus the expression 2x squared plus 2xy minus 4. For our first expression, we can just remove the parenthesis. The first expression is not affected. For the second expression, if it is preceded by a plus sign, then you also simply remove the parenthesis. So if it was adding, 
you can just remove the parenthesis. If it is subtracting, however, you will have to distribute the minus sign. This will simply change the sign of each of the values. We will ignore the original sign. The 2x squared was positive, so it will become minus 2x squared. The 2xy was positive, so it will become minus 2xy. The 4 was negative, so it will become plus 4. Now we can combine terms. 4x squared minus 2x squared. 4 minus 2 is 2, so we have 2x squared. Negative 3xy minus 2xy. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. So we have negative 5xy. Then we have our constant term plus 4. There's no similar term to it. So this is our answer. You'll need a lot of practice on these. Thanks for watching. Encourage us to post more videos by liking and sharing. Also visit ultimatealgebra.com for more exclusive videos.